Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, Lord God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord of God the Son, Lord God, and God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You are Lord of the Holy One. You are Lord of the Lord, you are Lord of the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to drop strive after all that does it honor to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fruitful and fertile, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord.
the reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, but also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once, because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. And some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed, you shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to hear, to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns 
is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. For the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, there are very many bad things happening in our country and in our world today. The coronavirus, race riots, deep political and cultural division, and the list goes on and on. Well, some years ago, the great famous moral theologian, Father Bernard Harry, was asked by a student, Father, are you optimistic about the way things are going? He replied, I am not optimistic. I have hope. Hope is one of the three theological virtues. The Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us that hope is the virtue by which we desire the kingdom of heaven and eternal life as our happiness. Placing our trust in Christ's promises, we rely not on our own strength, but on the grace of the Holy Spirit. The Catechism continues, hope keeps man from discouragement. It sustains him during times of abandonment. It opens up his heart in expectation of eternal beatitude. Buoyed by, up by hope, he is preserved from selfishness and led to the happiness that flows from charity. Well, humanly speaking, Christian hope does not always seem to make sense. But in the face of what seems hopeless, it sees God's fruitful word at work, the Holy Spirit giving birth to new life, the divine sower scattering new possibilities in every direction. Well, Jesus spoke in parables. A parable might be described as an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. A parable is a word picture, an example, an illustration, a comparison. Jesus knew how to catch people's attention by sprinkling his speech with liberal doses of, for instance, and that reminds me of. Jesus' parables are about ordinary things like seeds, weeds, salt, light, a lost coin. An ordinary people, a farmer, a housewife, a prodigal son and his pouting brother, a persistent widow, a man mugged on his way home from the big city. Jesus' parables are about the ordinary, it seems to me, because Jesus sees something of God in those ordinary things and people. Jesus sees a world full of God's disguises and surprises. We look through these parables to see God's will and God's way in our world. The readings today are about the power of God's word. Isaiah, for example, was giving God's word to people living in exile as a punishment for their sins. Everyone would have appreciated the transforming power of water and the cycle of life it made possible. The rains and the streams fed by the melting snows made it possible for the people to grow the grain so vital for survival. The produce of the previous year yielded the seeds for next year's planting. Through Isaiah, God was promising his people that just as surely as rain and snow from heaven make it possible for their crops to grow, so we will forgive his people, restore his covenant with them, and make them an example to the world of what it is to be a people close to God. His word will achieve the end for which he said it. The prophet is confident that God's word will find fertile ground in the hearts of people and transform them into a people equipped to nourish the nations of the world spiritually. God's people would assume their true purpose in life to be a light to all the nations of the world. But we might ask, if God's word is all powerful, why isn't that fact more apparent? Why is there so much evil in the world, so much suffering? St. Paul gives us a partial answer, I think, in today's second reading, pointing out that, quote, creation was made subject to futility not of its own accord, but by him who once subjected it. Jesus gives a fuller answer in the gospel. Like a man casting his seed, a common practice in all parts of the world in Jesus' day, God is sowing his word. Like the seed, God's word falls on different kinds of soil. Some will never begin to grow. Some will grow and then wither, but some will bear fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Every parable has only one lesson to convey. The lesson Jesus would teach us today, I think, is summed up in that one line of the gospel, whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. 
But we are the soil in which God has sown his word. As with people in general, so also with each one of us, sometimes God's word doesn't seem to take root. At times we tend to wither in our commitment. God, though, doesn't give up. God knows that our past failures and fickle enthusiasms are often signs of growth in our lives. If we are patient, if we persevere, God's word will bear fruit in us. One sign of this bearing fruit might be that we learn to be as patient with others as God is with us. Words are powerful. The words we say can hurt somebody's feelings terribly or can show them our love. Father Monsignor Maloney in his sermon this morning at 7.30 pointed out the words in the sacraments are especially good examples of this. As we say, I baptize you, receive the Holy Spirit, and uh, be anointed with the Spirit of God, and so forth. I, I absolve you that uh, the rest of those sacraments are the same. The words of the sacrament are very effective. They bring about what they say. Do you remember the act of hope of catechism class? Maybe you haven't thought about it for a long time, but let me read it for you. Oh my God, relying on your infinite goodness and promises, I hope to obtain pardon for my sins, the help of your grace, and life everlasting through the merits of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Please stand now and together let's profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of all angels, God from God, light from love, through God and through God, begotten God and me, my substantial of the Father. Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down to heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate in the Virgin Mary, he became man. For our sin, he was crucified and by just his life. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day of death, and recorded his prescriptions. He sent him to heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will bear now and then. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and Lord, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, and I confess in baptism and forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Christ teaches us through parables. Christ is the sower of the seed of God's word. Let us respond to his work by praying to the Father. That the church and the world today may be like the rich soil, yielding a harvest of a hundredfold. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of our nation will govern in a way which is accountable to God and to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the people who have problems of doubt or suffering may receive the word of God and be converted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are facing death may know true faith and inner peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have gone before us in faith will come to Christ and live forever. Let us also remember Duane Palmo, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, your grace has always achieved their purposes. As we make these requests in prayer, teach us to value your blessings. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of the compassion for this waywardness of ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, and without end we acclaim. <laughs> cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Lord, as we 
we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Andrew, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, the saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now please be seated. Father Lehi would like to speak to us. Good morning. I've already mentioned this to some of the people at uh, daily mass 
but given all this coronavirus stuff, some people are there, some people aren't for the weekend. I want to say one last time to all of you, thank you. Thank you for being supportive of me. I've been grateful to have been assigned here at St. Andrew these past two years. Too short a time, in my opinion. I'm thankful for the opportunity to have gotten to know many of you or be involved in your life to some degree or other. Uh, from the beginning, my priestly ministry, I've tried to keep a phrase that I've adapted from St. Augustine in my mind. It's, for you, I am a priest, but with you, I am a Christian. The former is a duty, the latter a grace. The former is a danger, the latter salvation. Hope that I've done good and contributed to the well-being of St. Andrew Parish. But I do ask for your forgiveness for any mistakes on my part or any failures. You've always been very kind and generous towards me. I know this is a small world, so it would be great to see many of you at some point in the future. I don't know if I'll ever be assigned here again. Yet at the same time, I realize that some of us may never cross paths again this side of eternity. And so, I wish you all the very best on this pilgrimage in life. Hope to meet you again in the fulfillment of God's kingdom. And may God bless all of you for your generosity. Thank you. One other announcement today. This weekend we begin the 2020 Bishop's Annual Appeal. Normally this occurs in May, but was delayed this year due to the pandemic and the lockdown. These are difficult times, but it is still very important that we do our part to support the Diocese of Columbus through the Bishop's Annual Appeal. Please make a pledge or a donation, whatever you are able to afford. Pledge envelopes were sent to every household. They're also available in the vestibule. You may return them by mail, drop them off at the parish office, or place them in the offertory basket sometime over the next few weeks. Thank you for your generous response to the Bishop's Annual Appeal. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, to love, and serve the Lord.